What's up guys, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Quick reminder, Dragon Con is in two weeks. We're going to be there all weekend. I'm going to be on two panels. Both of them will be on Friday, one at 2.30 and one at 5.30, and we're going to be holding meetups immediately after each panel. So if you want to get out to Dragon Con, I would suggest being there Friday. That'd probably be the easiest day to meet us. But we will be holding impromptu meetups throughout the rest of the weekend, just tweeting our locations. And I'll be in the Star Wars Trivia Contest Saturday at 1 p.m. unless something just goes terribly, terribly wrong. So if you're in the Atlanta area, we would love to meet you. Okay, our first question today comes from Raymond Lee, who asks if we think there will ever be a chance of seeing a Star Wars movie where the lead cast is primarily non-human. I love this question, and I love the idea of it. I do kind of think that the chances are slim for a couple reasons. It's mostly like out of universe things like marketing and budget. For budget, it's just more expensive to keep a bunch of actors in prosthetics or CGI. And for marketing, it's hard to promote like a big recognizable cast on a poster or a trailer if you can't recognize the cast. So I think in the immediate future, I'm doubtful about it. I would still love to see it happen, and I think that there are points on the opposite hand. Like, if you look at the Planet of the Apes movies, I mean, the main character is Andy Serkis as an ape. The main character is CGI, and people love it. And as for budget, I mean, Star Wars is going to make money no matter what. So really, they should be able to do it if they want to. I just think that they're probably going to keep it more human-based but I wish that they would do just like a whole alien cast at one point. Yeah, I think there would be a better chance of like a TV show or maybe a comic series of an all alien cast. Yeah, that's that's like a, a little more flexible because, I mean, it's a, if you're drawing a human or you're drawing an alien, doesn't really matter, doesn't really change things. But as for a movie, I don't know. I, I just think the chances are smaller. The Screen Avenger wants to know what aliens from the prequels we want to see in the sequel trilogy. I really like the Besilisks. Every time they show up, I think they're super cool. Uh, more along the lines of Pong Krill than Dexter Jetster, so sorry, Jetster fans. But, I mean, I want to see live-action a Besilisk fighting, like a blaster in all four hands, or even just hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think that would be super cool. I would like to see the Kalish. I mean, we've, we've only ever seen one as General Grievous, and that species is supposed to be like this badass warrior type creature. So that would be really cool to see. Yeah, I would love to see one of those like in the flesh <laughs> before they've been all cyborged up. Yeah, we did actually the, the Crimson Corsair in The Force Awakens is not a Kalish, but he wears a Kalish helmet. So that's kind of cool. We've like gotten a little closer to a live-action, full-on Kalish, but I want to see yeah, the real deal. That'd be great. Lord Hosk asks if there are any interspecies children in canon or legends. I think there can be an argument that the Knight Brothers of Dathomir are kind of an interspecies, sort of different subspecies of Zabrak, because... It's like they've interbred with Dathomirians. They're very different from Zabrax with normal, but, I mean, all of that's very muddled, and it's hard to say. Um, Pablo Hidalgo has confirmed that there are canon species that can uh, breed together. I just don't know that we've actually seen any, but if I'm wrong, we may have seen some. Uh, correct me in the comments. In Legends, I know that, like, the original Sith species, they interbred with humans, and we saw the result of that. And Lord Farfalla from the Darth Bane trilogy, he was a Jedi Knight, and he was the son of a human and a Bothan. So, yes, it has happened. Don Boring wants to know if you have ever thought of doing what-if videos on the channel. Yeah, I don't want to say I'm never going to do what ifs um but it's not really something that i want to do on this channel like channels like stupendous wave and star wars theory they have that pretty well covered and my vision for this channel is a place where it is just completely fact-based like i don't even really do theory videos all that often and if i do them 
I try to keep them very grounded in fact, facts of a fictional universe at any rate. Uh, so yeah, I don't really want to do what if videos because I find, or I'm afraid that it would potentially confuse people that are here to learn actual confirmed facts within the Star Wars universe. Yeah, I think what if videos are cool, but I think it also could possibly lead to an infinite amount of possibilities that could easily get out of hand. Yeah, like where does it end? <laughs> Stephen Raleigh asks if you age when you're frozen in carbonite. That's a fun question. Might be something to ask the upcoming official Star Wars science show, because I don't really know, but I'll make a guess. In Legends, at least, um, there was a Sith army that was frozen in carbonite <laughs> and uh, then was forgotten about for, like, thousands of years. And then there was this whole race to try to find them and unfreeze them and I assume to use them to fight. So yeah, the implication would be that they were frozen in carbonite and just did not age that entire time. I guess it's also possible because they say that Han went into hibernation that maybe just everything slowed down. So maybe you still age a little bit, but it's just much, much slower. But I don't really have any facts to back this up. This is just all of my own guesses. One bonus question is from Chris Martinez, who wants to know if we'll do a review video of the Wicket musical when it's out. So if you missed our announcement last week, there is going to be a musical called Wicket, produced by a local theater here in Atlanta called Dad's Garage. It's going to be a parody of the Broadway musical Wicked, all about Ewoks and kind of the story of Return of the Jedi told from their point of view. We just found out that the Georgia 501st is going to protest the musical as a joke. So that should be fun. Also, Dad's Garage is giving us tickets and t-shirts to give away to you guys, and we'll be talking about that probably next week. We'll give all those details, but I, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We love that theater, and we love that company. Um, as for a review, I probably won't do one for this channel because it's such a limited thing that only people in and around Atlanta can really see, but I'm positive that we will be vlogging the whole experience and talking about it, so uh, you can check all that out there. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where I left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained goodies like audio commentaries for the films and monthly giveaways, and the combined donations really go a long way in supporting the channel. On to YouTube questions, Dr. Cornelius Evazon asks why 3PO gets blown to bits in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, the real reason would be just to add a little drama to the story, uh, but I always like to go with an in-universe reason, or at least try to rationalize it that way. I would argue that we don't know what 3PO was shot with. Could have been a regular blaster bolt, but it could have been some sort of explosive round that just blew him to bits. Who knows? Oliver Piatilla wants to know if the 501st Legion could have killed all the Jedi in the temple without the help of Darth Vader. That is a question that's going to take a lot of speculation because we don't know how many Jedi were at the temple and we don't know exactly how many troopers there were either, but I think we can do the math and make a guess at least. We know that, thanks to Dave Filoni, that Anakin left one battalion of the 501st with Ahsoka on uh, Mandalore for the Siege of Mandalore. There are 12,800 stormtroopers or clone troopers in a legion. There are four regiments in a legion and four battalions in each regiment, which means that he left Ahsoka with 800 troopers. So there could have been 12,000 troopers attacking the Jedi Temple. But we don't know if some of the battalions were off somewhere else or if they were all there except for that one battalion. But since we can account for just that one, let's just pretend and assume that 12,000 were at the Jedi Temple. I still think that they had a pretty strong chance. I mean, obviously Anakin or Darth Vader is going to do a lot of work that day, but is one fallen Jedi really going to make the difference? 
I don't know. I kind of think that the clone troopers probably could have done it with those numbers just overwhelming the Jedi. Samurai Night Wars asks what happened to the Mustafarians or Mustafarians and their technology by the time of Rogue One. Um, I guess that you're saying because we didn't see any of that. It, like in Revenge of the Sith, we saw their little facility and we saw people working in the lava fields and we didn't see any of that in Rogue One. I don't think anything happened to them. I think they're all still there. It's just that we were seeing two different locations. We saw where Anakin and Obi-Wan fought, and then we saw Darth Vader's fortress. Now, in The Art of Rogue One, the original concept for that fortress was that the Emperor had it built, and it was overlooking the exact spot where Vader <laughs> was beaten. I don't think that's what they wound up going with. I think it's just a fortress because it's actually built on top of uh, some Sith temple or some old Sith structure, and the coincidence of that looking over that same spot I think is pretty slim. So I think we were just shown two different locations, and the Mustafarians are fine, and I'm sure their tech is fine too. Gavin Sherbinsky wants to know why the Umbarans wore helmets with gas in them when there was oxygen on their planet. It's a good question. The helmets actually were not for breathing, they were for combat. The gas was being pumped into their systems through the helmets, and the gas would just help increase their reflexes and their aggression in battle. So they were like super soldiers. Pretty much, yeah. The Star Wars nerd asks how Lando rose through the ranks of the Rebellion so quickly. I thought it was pretty obvious in the movie. I mean, didn't you hear about his maneuver at the Battle of Tanab? Um, <laughs> to be honest, though, that's always something that kind of confused me as well. I mean, he was only in the Rebellion for a year at that point. I think it was mostly just to build drama and suspense, put a character of some importance uh, in a position where he is in danger, and also, I mean, in the universe, it was a position of importance. But to try to answer it in-universe, I would argue that the Rebellion, their leadership, probably had a pretty high turnover rate. They were constantly being hunted. Uh, they were a small organization to begin with, so if Lando has military experience if he uh, pulled off this maneuver in the Battle of Tanab, and I'm guessing we'll see that in the Han Solo movie, and hopefully it proves to be good enough to make him a general, I, I think that's what got him there. But I agree, he rose through the ranks incredibly fast. That's all the time we have for questions today, so if you want to leave us a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below, or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion over there. I also do a weekly Q&A every Friday on my Anchor Station where you can call in, ask a question. I'll play it on the air and I will answer it live. There's a link to that in the description. Um, remember Dragon Con's coming up. Remember Wicked's if you're in the Atlanta area. And I think that's about it. So if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. As always, thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.